Because the world, the world got us by the cojones now. So now all they got to do is put a dude up there with racks up to his ear and you'll listen to everything he say because he's got money in your face. He's showing you the money. So you're like, oh, he got money. So he must be right. Just like with the woman, they'll put her in this costume. I like to call it a costume, lace front, this hair hat, put on these big old eyelashes, put all this makeup on and show, they show you how they look toe up and then how they look cute. And then you, yes, yes, and the nails, yes, and the lace front. So you listen to everything they say. And they ain't even talking about nothing. They, they making you hate men. They making you hate certain people because of what they went through. Don't let no hurt woman that got hurt by some Negro with influence get on the screen. Because every woman that like how she look going to listen to everything she say. She got her heart broken because how she looks. You look like that. You drawing these men that's doing you wrong because the hair hat and the costume that you wearing. Now you attracting all of these no good Negroes. They keep hurting you. So now you got experience in being hurt. So now you get in front of the world and go get a bunch of potential women that got potential. Then you sit there and clap your nails together. And ha, 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 ha. and next thing you know, they all listening to you and they all can't get married and they all can't find a man because they taking your advice because you keep failing. So because the wig matched the nails, the breast pushed up nice, the tattoo on the shoulder is banging. Yes, bitch. Yeah, now you following her. Right. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Thanks for the warning, Crystal. <laughs> but no, seriously, I watch it happen all the time and I can't say nothing about it. I'm a man. It reminds me of the Amazon community. You, If you a brother and you see this, shut up. Because if you say something, they finna attack you. But it is what it is. I'm not here to judge, but I thank God for wisdom and I thank God for allowing me to see it. All it does is teaches me how to move. I see these type of females all the time. I don't care how fine they are. I'm like, uh-uh, that's dangerous. <laughs> uh-uh, that is dangerous. I am not going that way. You're not finna cut my whole head off. Anyways, a bribe is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. A bribe is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. Hey, here, I'm going to give you this. Because a bribe, what a bribe is, is using something to gain something out of another person. So if you're easily bribed, that person going to get what they want out of you. That's why it says like a lucky charm. The person will prosper. If I got something you want, you got something I want, depending who bribes who, they're going to get what they want out the other person. This is why a lot of brothers is able to get in women's underwears because they use dinners as bribes. They use getting your hair done as bribes. They use getting your nails done as bribes. They use giving you some money to help you pay your bills and your rent as bribes. And then they get what they want out of you. Beyonce, listen, Beyonce ruined a lot of people when she came out with that song, Can You Pay My Bills? Wait a minute, we all grown. Why? Listen, listen, listen. I would encourage you not to pay no brother's bills. Don't buy him no shoes. Don't go, go buy him no haircuts, nothing. But if these brothers, if you base yourself on, I need a man that can pay my bills. That doesn't stop the diseases. That doesn't stop the abusiveness. That doesn't stop the uh, pimping in them. That doesn't stop the unloyalty because he can pay your bills. It's brothers out here with money. Oh, that's all she want? Hey, well, let me pay her bills and give her this HIV real quick. So if you if you lowering your standards to, I need a man that can pay my bills. Mm. No, you don't. Because this brother's out there with money. They don't care about that. Oh, a phone bill? And you, oh my God, girl, he paid my bill. How much was the phone bill? $45. So you gave him some underwear. You let him just run rapid all on your body for $45? Well, he paid my bills. Yeah, let me duck. He paid my bills. Who cares? You could pay your own bills. You are an adult. Listen, and I'm not, I'm not trying to come for the women that attack the women or nothing, but I just need y'all to understand this. I need y'all to understand this. You are grown. A man paying your bills 
is a way to justify that you a broke nigga, just like y'all call niggas broke niggas. You can't pay my bills, you a broke nigga. You don't got your bills paid, so you a broke nigga. See how that works? See how that works? We quick to call somebody a broke person, but you asking for somebody to do something for you. You broke. Just like these brothers. Oh, you ain't safe. Ah. You ain't safe either. I need a woman to do this, that, and the third. She need to clean my... Hold on, how she gonna need to clean a house that you don't even have? You want these women to cook for you at their house. That's her house. You in there telling her she need to cook for you. Where your house? Where's your anything? These sorry brothers out here capitalizing on women because women, girls, when they was little girls, guess what? They like to play with dolls. Little girls like to play with dolls. They like to braid their hair. They like to dress them up. They like to take care of stuff. So these bozos out here is just baby dolls for these women. That's why, oh, girl, he needs some Jordans. Oh, girl, he'll look so cute with that right there. You just a baby doll, a grown baby doll. Now, when y'all on one accord, there's nothing wrong with your wife doing nice things and taking care of you because it's, th it's th uh, both. It goes both ways. Your husband don't have to pay your bills. Y'all in the same house. He's paying the bills. If he like you in the nails and hair done and he pay for it, he's paying the bills. Those might be your bills. That's what he likes. So brothers, you want all of that stuff you asking for. Take care of that. That's do it. You want your girl fine as wine every time you look around, go pay for it. Because if she don't feel like getting all fine as wine or she don't want to spend her money on all of that, then shut up if she walking around the house looking like you. But ladies, this I need a man to pay my bill stuff, very dangerous. Because all you do is end up with a bunch of kids and no man. Well, he was paying, he paid my bills. Yep, and he got the cooch like he wanted to because he paid for it. Now he done left you high and dry. It got to be more than just paying your bills. Some of these people, these brothers out here buying these breasts and butts for these girls. And then after they done, now the girl walking around deformed because he didn't keep up with it. But I need you to look like, oh, that's what you want? Oh, I got money. Yeah, I'll buy you some titties. You got to just, all you got to do is just slow everything down. Okay, so this man really want to buy me some breasts. For what? So when he want to come through and be nasty, I look right for him. Life is more than that. A lot of y'all don't understand when you get married and be with the person that you're going to be with for the rest of your life, they going to see the beauty in you even when you ain't that age no more. This is why in the virtuous woman verse of Proverbs, it says beauty is deceit, deceitful. It's basically telling you you're not going to be fine all your life. So you might as well find somebody that likes you for you right now because that beauty going to deteriorate. You still trying to find him. Now he can't see you because you're old and raggedy looking. Find you somebody that love you right now and uh, pray that the Lord get y'all mar marry y'all. If they don't want to marry you, if they're not talking about marrying you eventually, for real. And if when a man talks about marrying you, something in you like, okay, I believe him. I believe him. Okay. It's just, and his excuse why should be valid. If he, If it ain't valid, I don't care if you got to tell him, listen, go get me a bubble gum ring out the bubble gum machine and put it on my, I need some kind of promise to let me know that this is real. You know, don't, don't get lured on because time, time, when you start getting up there, your search, your search, uh, what's that? Your search engine starts to thin. Your search bar starts to thin. The algorithms for you start to thin. Yeah, yeah, I know he ain't gonna like me. And then next thing you know, you're just gonna be sleeping with a bunch of 21-year-old horny dudes because they know how to do what they doing because they young. But you, you're not happy. 
Didn't want to park here too long, but God wanted me to. <laughs> All off of a bribe is a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. Serious. These brothers and sisters be bribing each other out of stuff. And then after they get what they want, oh no, we supposed to be together. I didn't have sex with you. Nah, that was a bribe. You said you want me to pay your bill. I paid your bills. And, and, and the results of me paying your bills is... <coughs> What you think I'm doing this for free? You know, so be very careful because bribes is like lucky charms. They're magically delicious. No, I'm just joking. Um, verse nine, verse nine, love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Pay attention to this. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. But dwelling on it separates close friends. When you don't forgive somebody, the love doesn't have a chance to, to work its way in there. When you dwell on it, the longer you keep bringing up, have you ever did this with a person? Have you ever did something wrong to a person and you really didn't mean to do it and you keep trying to turn that leaf and they keep bringing it up and they keep bringing it up to the point where you're like, I'm done with this nerd. I'm sorry, look. I didn't mean what I did to you. I'm sorry I did it to you. Can you forgive me? No, because what you did, it hurt me. It sent me through a time of depression. It sent me through a time of anxiety. I wanted to kill myself. I'm sorry. Nope, because you know, a lot of people like that negative attention. That's why they don't forgive you for what you did to them because they got you. Finally, I got you. Yeah, I'm going to keep using this because, you you know, and that's messed up. Now you, I'm really sorry for what I did, but you won't forgive me and you using it as an opportunity to go on Facebook and get some likes. Yeah, Elder Kraft said this about me and he is so wrong. This is why I don't deal with these kind of people. Uh-huh, girl, I hear you. Like, like, like. High five hands. High five hands. I'm high fiving for you. I'm, I'm going to keep you in my high five. <laughs> Holding you hostage. Come on, Chia. That's exactly what they're doing. Um, that scripture, Casey, that's um, Proverbs 17 and... Nine, Proverbs 17 and nine. Proverbs 17 and nine says, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. Listen, this, I'm telling you, have, now, now let me flip side that for you. Have you ever did somebody wrong and you knew you was wrong for doing it and you like, man, I know they hate me. Oh man, I wish I never did that to them. And they tell you, they say, look, I forgive you, man. That's water under the bridge. Don't worry about it. I understand. I'm I, look. I accept your apology. Let's move on. That load off you. You may oh my. It make you love that person. Like man, I thought they was gonna cuss me out. Man, I thought they was really done with me forever. They actually forgave me, and we even closer. The benefits of forgiving people strengthens the relationship with you and that person. <sighs> Right. Yeah, you got to be careful with that, CC, because that's narcissist. That's narcissistic men. That's a narcissist man. Narcissism and Jezebel, they wrote a hand in hand. Jezebel spirit is the narcissism. Narcissism is the male version of Jezebel. Manipulating, very manipulating. Ain't they don't never do nothing wrong to nobody. Everybody's always doing something to them. And then they prey on weak people to make them weak people feel sorry for them. So they build up this army of weak people patting them on the back. You okay, sis? It's okay, sis. Man, that woman got you wrapped around her fingers. And the men do it too. Man, that's why I don't, that's, I, these type of females right here, I can't, man, I'm telling you, they, all they do, and then they get these weak brothers. Yeah, you right. Now they got an army of brothers patting this narcissist on the back because he playing the victim. Don't never want to be accountable for the stuff he did. Or she don't want to be accountable for the stuff she did. Let's move on, y'all. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 10 says, A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of fools. 
Watch this. A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a, a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. A person with understanding, when you rebuke somebody that has understanding, they become wiser. When you rebuke a, few, a fool, you look foolish. But this rebuke to a person with understanding is more powerful than sitting there beating the crap out of a fool because they don't get something. Why? Why? You just sitting there whacking them across their back with a, with, with a stenching cord and it will not change them. But you rebuke a person with understanding, through, get them right back on track and they keep going. Very powerful. Very powerful. A single rebuke is more, a single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. What worked one, one word, what worked in one try for a person with understanding takes a hundred tries for a person that don't understand. You got to keep a foolish person. You got to keep. I said, listen, listen, I'm trying, listen to me. Have you ever tried to explain something to a foolish person and they keep cutting you off and don't let you get to the explanation you're trying to make and it just piss you off and make you even more matter? Next thing you know, you don't even stick to the whole plan and y'all fighting. That's what happened when you try to rebuke a foolish person. You find yourself doing it. Listen, listen, look, can you listen to me? Ha listen, hold on. Let me say what I'm trying. You find yourself doing that. A wise person or a person with understanding, they let you finish your sentence. First of all, this is a person with understanding. They let you finish saying what you're trying to say, even if you're wrong. Because they have understanding. They need to understand what you're trying to say. And in order for them to understand what you are trying to say, they have to shut up and listen to you and let you finish. That's why... Rebuke, a single rebuke to a person with understanding has more power than trying to beat a fool to understand it. Let's move on. It's going to start getting interesting. Proverbs 17 and 11 says, evil people are eager for rebellion, but they will be severely punished. Evil people are eager for rebellion. I'm done. I'm done with this family. I'm leaving this family. I'm out of here. Why? I, I just can't. I don't got time. I don't do that. I don't do. I don't do mess. Why are you leaving? Why are you rebelling? Pay attention. Did what happened? It don't matter. Something happened. I'm gone. Wait, why are you leaving? Stay, stay. It's okay. Let's get to the bottom of this. What happened now? Evil people are eager to rebel, especially when it comes to godly matters. God done drawed us and pulled us together. God done put people together. And the first thing we doing is looking for a reason to rebel, to get out of there. Be careful. Get away from those people. Get away from the people that's looking for a reason to leave. Evil people, evil, are eager for rebellion. Uh-uh, I, I don't want nothing to do with this. Uh-uh, I don't got, uh-uh, this is fake love. This is fake positivity. This is fake support. This is fake. Yeah, yeah. Just constantly against everything. That's because you got evil intentions. If you got good intentions and love and, 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 and want to see the body of Christ grow, why are you so quick to leave? We, we're here to endure adversity. We're a peculiar people. God handpicked us. He handpicked us because he knew Y'all going to be there when people come against you, when you find out they talking behind your back, when you find out they, when you find out they using and abusing you, y'all going to still be there. The enemy is the one saying, get away from them. Watch out. It's fake. Watch out. They know he's trying to get you out of a covering that God has put you under. Don't let the man push you away from something God is covering you in. God is protecting you. Of course it's going, people are people. 
I don't know why we think when we say we love the Lord and thus says the Lord that we're not going to do nothing to hurt each other's feelings. We're still humans. That's why it's better we just shut up. Because when we shut up, we don't have to worry about hurting nobody. I believe that this chapter ends in something about shutting up. I believe that this, that's this chapter. But yeah, evil people are eager to rebel, but they will severely they will severely be punished. If God calls you some, to something, no matter, listen, if God calls you, if you felt the call of God life and it has you where you are today, stay right there. The devil is doing everything that he can to get you to get out of that. That's why it says evil people are eager to rebel because the devil is the one highlighting that you need to leave. You need to get away from them. You need to get up out of there. Why would God lead you somewhere to tell you to get away from it? He would have never let you get there. Never thought about that? Let's move on. It is safer to meet a, oh, watch this. Mm, this is a good one right here. It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in his foolishness. Woo, I'm gonna read it again. It is safer, watch this. It is safer to meet, come in contact with a bear that just got her cubs stole from her. You safer in that presence of that bear that just that's looking for her cubs than you are trying to confront a foolish person and they foolishness. What does this mean? When you catch somebody a foolish, this is a foolish person. Remember this. When you catch a foolish person up in a foolishness, you you better you better off just getting away because you're not going to be able to prove to them or confront them about nothing that they did. Because all they going, I didn't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't me. Somebody else. Who are you talking about? Wasn't so you know somebody might do or say something foolish, and you like you know the other day you said. Um, that this, that, and the third, that that wrestle right there of dealing with that foolish person and their foolishness is worse than running into a bear that lost her cubs. You got a better chance of getting up out of that situation when a bear mad as all get out. Look, where's my babies? You got a better chance of getting out of that situation than actually confronting a foolish person in their foolishness. You better off just when you notice people doing this, this is how you get past. This is how you get through this. When you notice somebody in their foolishness, just go the other way. Don't say nothing to them. As human beings, we got this problem to think we always got to correct something that somebody did wrong. We always think we got to say something. Well, you my brother and I, uh, you know, my brother, we got to correct each other. Iron sharpen iron. You talking to a fool though. That say them sayings don't go for foolish people. It tells you right there. It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in his foolishness. God is telling you, don't say nothing to them. You better off trying to help the bear find her babies. Hmm. 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 Mm. Let's keep going. Thirteen says, if you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house mm. watch this proverbs chapter 17 verse 13 says if you repay good with evil evil will never leave your house watch this Ooh, i was in sister cc live that woman is powerful god is really on her life god is really using her uh, uh, well, I don't know. That ain't what I'm getting from God. I think she a witch. The person that said that, now the witches is all in their house. Now the demons and devils is all in their house. Now everywhere they go, evil is following them because somebody, somebody lifted up a sister that doing something positive and said good things about this sister and then the person that's listening to you praise the sister says, I don't know about that. She or that, 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 that. That's rewarding good with evil. Cece is doing something good. Somebody is talking about what good she is doing and the person that's listening is speaking bad on her name. Rewarding good with evil. Just because you jealous. Just because you mad. You not going to get up there and do it. 
Oh, Elder Craft, man, he anointed. God is really on him. I don't know. Uh, he ain't ordained to do that. I would be very careful in there with him because he playing with God. Then you wonder why all hell breaking loose in your house and not mine. You wonder why everything around you falling, falling apart and everything around me is coming together. Don't reward evil. Don't reward good with evil because evil will never leave your house. Be very careful what you agree with with people. Be very careful how you looking at people because you ain't going to God like you need to. God, show me this person. No, you're too busy listening to all of these fake ministers. You're too busy listening to all of these jealous church folk because the person, the, the anointing is on the life of a person that didn't go through the same thing you had to go through. Why? That ain't God. That ain't how I'm, that, that ain't, I ain't, I'm sorry. I'm not used to that. That's not, that ain't how they do it at my church. Oh, well. Oh, well. That ain't how they do it at your church. Go to your church. But we don't need you over here rewarding good with evil, bringing your negativity to a situation you see God moving on. You know God is moving, but it don't look familiar to you because you old school and religious and stuck in your ways, a.k.a. stiff neck. Nope, I don't want to know. Nope, that ain't how I know. That ain't how I'm used to it. That's not God. Well, get your butt out of here. We don't need your opinion. See ya. Anyways, let's keep going. Ooh, 14 says, starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate. So stop before a dispute breaks out. Woo, watch this. Starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate. So stop before a dispute breaks out. Going around. Bearing false witness. I don't go to that lie because they don't, they don't support me. These people are jealous of me. They don't like me. You're starting a quarrel. And if you don't stop it, people are going to start sympathizing with you. Next thing you know, you built this army of people that's going, moving off of fake opinions. That's moving off of fake feelings because of the way you're looking at things. So you go and you go amongst people and start these little arguments and quarrels. Yeah, they probably doing that because they only support that person. They only, yeah, the reason, that's why I don't go over there because they, 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 they listen, leave. This stuff is cancer to the body of Christ. When people do backbiting and side talking and, and, painting these fake deceptive pictures about stuff that's cancer to the body of Christ because the person listening to you is now going hmm, hmm I didn't see that but so now they done put a seed in your mind about a person so now when you go look you start oh wait a minute maybe they might be right now this done grew in you and now you sharing it yeah I don't go in there because have you noticed tell us right here Starting a quarrel is like a floodgate, like opening a floodgate. One, you, you know what a floodgate is? On the other side, <coughs> on the other side of a floodgate is water, and it's up to a certain level, and it's being held over there for a reason because it's everything over here is safe. But when you open that floodgate, what happens? The water comes rushing in and destroying everything in its path. Keep your opinions to yourself. Keep your fake thoughts to yourself about things. Don't. Take it to God. If you get a feeling about something, take it to God. Lord, what is this? Show me. You will hear the Lord clearly tell you. Yeah, watch out for that person. They, uh, they not around for the reasons you think, but they using their charm and their beauty or they using their money and success or they using their influence to win people over because, oh, they so cute. Oh, they so, they remind me of an angel. Be careful. Any people out, that's what the devil's supposed to do. He's supposed to remind you of an angel because he disguises himself as one. Let's move on. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent both are detestable to God. 
Knowing somebody is doing something wrong and you standing up for them and say, no, nah, they're not doing, ain't nothing wrong with what they're doing. And then somebody that's not doing anything wrong, everybody coming against them is detestable, an abomination. God does not like this. God does not like, because this, this is what this is. It's favoritism. I like this person, so I'm going to just agree with the, what this person is saying. Even though I know this person is lying, I'm going to just agree with them because I like them. I don't like that other person. So now you condemning the innocent and um, and um, acquitting the guilty because you like that guilty person. They cool. They come to my live all the time or they call and check up on me all the time. They text me every day, make sure I'm okay. But they wrong as two left shoes, but they, at least they look out for me. So they, they look, they not guilty in my book. They, if they're guilty, they're guilty. It tells you there right there. 15, 17 and 15 says, acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, both are detestable to the Lord. God don't like it. Trying to stick up for a friend, even though they dead wrong. Exactly. Talking about this is loyalty. That is not loyalty. People try to, People try to, well, well, you know what? That could be loyalty. But people try to mix loyalty and love and call it the same thing. Loyalty and love is two different things. Um, that's Proverbs 17 and I believe 15. Proverbs 17 and 15. Yeah, Proverbs 17 and 15. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent are both detestable to the Lord. Verse 16 says, it is senseless to pay to educate a fool since he has no heart for learning. Read it again. It is senseless to pay for education for a fool since he has no heart for learning anyways. You putting all this money, investing all this money into a person that don't even want to do it anyways. It's senseless. You know this person is a fool. They don't want to learn. A, listen, you got a kid that don't believe in the Bible. You got a kid that don't ain't going to never want to read the Bible. But you take your hard on hard earned work money and send him to a Bible school. You just wasted your money. It has to be in the heart. That's why you have to look at the heart of people, see where their heart is and what their hearts are into, and then you endorse them according to that. A lot of us, we have ruined our own children's future because we wanted them to be a doctor, but their heart was in making video games. See, I'm not gonna spend no money for you to go to no school to make no video games. You're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer in this family. That wasn't they calling. Now you done forced them to be something they didn't want to be. Because it was something you were supposed to do with your life that you failed at. You wanted to be a doctor. I didn't do it. I didn't make it. I got pregnant and had these kids. So I'm just going to put all my money into making sure my daughter become a doctor. Is that what your daughter want to be? If you endorse what your daughter wants to do, she'll be successful at it. But if you make her do something she don't want to do, she's going to resent you for it. Yeah, I'm making all this money. Yeah, it's all cool, but I didn't want to do this. I'm only doing it because my mom paid all this money or my dad paid for all this money for me to go here. Invest in what your kids or invest in what people that you love, I should say. We ain't even going to just say kids. Invest in what people that you love around you, what they want to do. Invest in what they want to do. It might seem stupid to you. But it might be very successful and help them for their futures. Just because it looks stupid to you. If you love them, you're going to endorse what they want to do. If their heart is in writing children's books, but you want them to be the president of the United States. You need to be spending your money on making sure they get the utensils and proper teaching to write children's books. That's where they're going to be successful at. That's where they're going to be happy while they're doing it. It's going to grow and flourish. And it's going to be something that they can live, lead to their children's 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 children. But we too busy. It's my money. You need to be. We want to control people because we think they should be what we think they should be. It is senseless. 
<laughs> it is senseless to pay for education for a fool since his heart is since there since he has no heart for learning. Don't invest in the things that people don't want to do because you think they should do it. It ain't going to work. It's senseless. 17 and 17 says a friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in the time of need. If we take this on as a person, as, if we take this and live this in our hearts, we will be, we'll find ourselves always there for people in the right, at the right time, at the right moment. If I need to move and I got two brothers and I call my brother, hey man, I need help getting these refrigerators and stuff out of here. And they come over and just do it. You know how good that makes me feel. And they, oh, yeah, let me give them something. I didn't have to wrestle and fight with them. My brother came through for me and helped me get the heavy stuff out my house. A true friend is always loyal. It tells you right there. A friend is always loyal. A real friend, not no fake friend. You know, sometimes people, you my friend. You can tell who your friends are. They don't have to say they're your friends. They, they move like it. They don't have to say, I am your friend. You can tell, like, this person really like me. They dealing with me. They got, hey, this person is dealing with me at this time. This person is giving me their ear when I need to talk. This person is sitting here going through this with me. They don't have to be here. These are my problems. They don't have to say, I'm your friend. Watch out for these people. I, when they got to tell you they're a real friend, nine times out of 10, they not. If a person got to announce what they are to you, nine times out of 10, they not. When a person got to say, I am a very loyal person. I am very sincere. Nine times out of 10, they not. They don't have to say it. I don't have to walk around saying, I'm a good guy. I'm a good person. You'll see it. If I'm a good person, you'll see it. You'll say it yourself. That's why there's a proverb in here that says, let others praise you and not yourself. Watch these people that have to tell you what type of people they are. I'm a good person. I'm a, a, lo I'm a loyal friend. I'm very sincere. Put the warning flags up. You got to tell me this. Why do you got to tell? This should be a natural thing in you. It should be a natural characteristic trait. You shouldn't have to say nothing about it. People should see it on you. People should feel it through you when you deal with them. You'll find yourself in secret, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. Kiki solid. I ain't gonna Kiki solid. And then that helps you keep going further in friendship with Kiki because behind the scenes, you telling yourself, man, Kiki really solid. That was cool. She looked out for me. I, you know what? But she shouldn't have to, I'm solid. Here, let me give you this money. I'm, I'm very giving. Here, I'm gonna give you $100. Here, I'm a giving person. No, but if I'm like, hey, I feel like you need this more than me. I don't know why the Lord told me to give you this. And don't say nothing about it now. You like, man, crap gave me $100, man. He a really, he really a giving person, man. That's what's up. You know what? I thank God for that, per that brother. That's why Proverbs tell you, let other man praise you and not yourself. Hey, positive vibes. I see you, sis. God bless you. Let other people praise you and not yourself. I'm loyal. I'm a real friend. Oh, I got to watch you. You had to say that? You had to say it out loud around me? I'm worried. Verse 18 says, it's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. What this means is, hey, Dimples, what this means is somebody is in debt, right? You know you be having money. You might ask, you might, you run across money here and there, but you say, you know, I got them. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of his debt. I'll pay you. And then your bills pop up, auto pay, snatch everything out your wallet. Now you done put up security for somebody else's debt and you don't even got the money. It's not wise to do that. Don't jump the gun. I'll pay for it. Don't worry about it. I got it. Don't jump the gun and put up security. It says it's poor judgment to do that. It's poor judgment to be like, I got it. Don't worry about it. How much was it? I'll pay for it. Uh, be back here on Wednesday at four o'clock. And then on Tuesday at three o'clock, um, you have a bill. We're gonna shut. shut we're gonna shut something off. 
at so and so time. Now you like, because what you would do is when it comes to your own well being in your pockets, you're going to take care of you. You're not going to say, I'm, I got to let my lights get cut off because I did tell them tomorrow I was going to pay for so and so's debt. No, you're going to take care of it. And now you left looking like a fake person when you got to go back and tell this person, well, I was going to pay your debt, but they was about to turn my lights off today. So my bad. Now they like, nah, you ain't loyal. You made me really feel like you was going to take care of this. I told my kids that we cool. The lights going to be on for this month and we don't got to leave. That's why it says it's poor judgment to jump the gun and say, I'll pay you for that person. If you got it, that's why it tells you in Proverbs. I don't know if it's the same one. No, it's another Proverbs that says the same thing. And it says, don't put up security for a stranger or say you're going to pay someone's debt. Because if it doesn't come through, you look crazy. You look, your loyalty is on the, on the line now. Now they can say you a fake person or you, you let them down. So it says when you have it, that's what it is. Thank you, Jesus. When it, it says in that Proverbs, if you have it, do it right then and there. Don't wait till later. Don't wait. If you got it right now, pay for it right now. Don't say I got you Wednesday because them people, the person might be banking on that. So then Wednesday come and you don't got it because you needed to pay one of your own debts. That's why I said if you, pay, if you can pay your debt or pay surety for a stranger, do it right then and there. Don't wait because when you take care of it right then and there, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You ain't got nothing. They can't say you're fake. You can't say it's your, because they'll blame you for their lights being cut off because you said you was going to pay for it and you didn't. So it tells you right here, it is poor judgment to guarantee a person's debt or put up security for a stranger. It's poor, it's poor judgment. If you're going to do it, do it right then and there. When you have it now, do it now. Don't say wait and come back. This is what the other, I don't know what proverb this is in, but it's another proverb that talks about this and it says, do it when you can. Don't wait. And if you don't wait and say, when I have it later, I'll do it because you might not have it later. Now that person is like, bro, I depended on you. Now my lights is off and your lights is on. You was just trying to do, you just did that to be seen. You wanted everybody to see you was going to do something for me. And then behind the scenes, you didn't even do it. Now you made yourself look bad. All right, let's keep going. Let's move, let's move forward. 19 says, anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. Hmm. Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. Let me park on this real quick. Anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. Quarreling means debating, bickering, and fighting amongst each other debating, quarreling. Well, I disagree. Have you ever met one of them? Have you ever met people like that? They not listening to you for nothing right you said. They waiting for the time you make a mistake. I disagree. I just said a whole book of stuff that was right. And now you caught me on this one thing. I disagree with that um, because it says yellow, not green. You said green. Oh my gosh. Why are you doing this to me? But it says, anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. This is the one right here. Yeah, negative nasty. Come on, Danielle, you already know. This is the part right here of the scripture I wanted to talk about. Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. Did anybody, do anybody, before I even go into this, do you kind of get an understanding of what that means? Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. You know what this is? You got a little money in the bank. I'm, I ain't going to never be broke again. I got $3 million in the bank. Now, soon as you start being prideful about your protection, the things that attack your protection start to manifest. So what it's saying is people that build high walls, all you're doing is making somebody that think they can get over that wall start attacking your wall. I know they're not going to get up in here. My walls is too high. Now you got people building ladders. To, to How tall is that wall? A hundred feet? Oh, all I got to do is build a 200 foot ladder. How tall is that wall? Oh, it, uh, it's impenetrable. Only thing can go through it is missiles. Oh, well, let me go get a missile. Well, basically what you're doing, when you put your trust in stuff, all you're doing is making the, the haters that can terrorize your stuff start to come. 
Just like if you got a big old backyard, you say, ooh, my backyard is so big, I can have tomatoes for the rest of the year. The pests that eat tomatoes is going to be way more deeper. Or it's going to be more of them now. Oh, I'm cool. I got enough yard to cook tomatoes from here. I got enough yard. Watch this. I'm going to use weed. Woo, this yard that I got, I can grow so much weed that I'm going to make $300,000 this month. And as soon as you start investing and in growing the weed, here come every pesticide. Niggas is jumping your gate, stealing your weed. People all around your house plotting, breaking in your house, going down. you like, dang, every day I come home, somebody jumping my back gate. Oh, no, no. Remember, you got enough yard to make $300,000 off of growing weed back there. This is basically what they're saying. The moment you think you safe is the moment that the things that threaten your safety starts to manifest. Did that make sense? The moment you think you're safe the, is the moment that the things you think you safe from start to manifest and start threatening your safety. Vanity. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. Just that part. Just that part. I like that one. That was a good one. Um, anyone who trusts in high walls invite disaster. Oh, here go a better one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A fighter that's never lost a fight. A person that has never lost a fight. Now, everybody that think they can beat you up won't the fade. Ain't nobody ever beat this person. I'm going to beat them. So now you got more enemies even though you never lost to one. You see how that's working? You got more enemies, even though you defeated everyone that you fought. You've never been beat up by any of your opposers. That creates more opposers. Did that make sense? Oh, I could beat him. I'm going to be the first one to give him his loss. A virgin. I'm going to wait till I get married to have sex. Every brother in America trying to have sex with you once they find out you a virgin. <laughs> you see how this is working? <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Ah, where we at? Verse 20, Proverbs 17 and 20 says, the crooked hearted will not prosper. The lying tongue tumbles into trouble. Mm. A crooked heart will not prosper prosper the lying tongue will tumble into trouble have you ever listen watch this a crooked heart here go a crooked heart trying to prosper say you start selling crack but you tell yourself i'm doing this i'm gonna just do this until i can take care of my business and get back on my feet i'm gonna just do this until i'm doing it i know it's negative but i'm doing it for a positive reason and then you end up getting cracked before you can get the pro positive reason you end up going to jail before you can even see the positivity in it or you either you end up going in too deep in it that you forgot about the whole reason why you was doing it and now you're doing it because you like the money crooked hearts don't prosper because in your heart you're saying you know that it's wrong what you're doing, but you're trying to do it for a good reason. And before you can even get the good reason out of it, you end up failing and not getting to where you thought you was going to go. Because it's not the right thing to do. It's crooked. But you, you, you know what? I'm just stealing these shoes because I don't have no shoes. I'm wearing them. This ain't hurting nobody that I'm stealing shoes. And then you end up getting cracked and going to jail for grand theft or petty th theft. Your heart, you was trying to, you thought, I'm just doing this because I don't got no shoes. I'm not hurting nobody. This is a crooked heart. We'll tell not. another lie to keep the other lie from, be, to make the other lie look true. So now you're just going down this rabbit hole of lying about something because you got to make all of them lies look like truth. And then you end up stumbling into trouble because somebody is paying attention. But didn't you say, no, nah, you said it was Wednesday. Now you said it's Friday. Now you, uh, hold on, he lying. We got him. Now you look crazy. It's better to just tell the truth. I know sometimes we want to decorate the story and amplify it a little better than what it is. Sally was walking across the street and she almost got hit by a truck. She, But she went like this and the truck just barely missed her. If that's what happened, 
Tell that story. Don't say, Sally, ooh, Sally almost got hit by a truck. She was going across the street, and then somebody swung down on a rope and scooped her across the street, boom, right before the truck. And why? Why? Just tell the story the way it happened. It's interesting, the person that get the tea, the person that get the story, they got to just throw their extra little cubes of sugar on it with lemon squeeze on it, and they pinky up while they telling it. No, if it was basic, she walked across the street and stopped right before the truck went past. Tell that story. No, she, I don't know, she got black people calves. She jumped smooth over the truck, and it went right under her feet, and she landed so perfect, two motorcycles swerved and crashed into each other, and fire, shut up. Just tell the regular story. We do that, we got that bad. People want to throw extras on everything. It is painful to be the, oh, watch this. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of a rebel, of a rebel. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. There is no joy for the, for the father of a rebel. Everybody else, kids getting up, going to school, staying at school all day, getting their work done, bringing home good homework and grades, and your kid ditching. Ain't at school smoking weed in the seventh grade. Got everybody else that don't listen smoking weed. They don't go to school at all. They ditch every day. They just rebellious to their parents. And you, the father of the kid that led the that led the pioneering of smoking weed seventh graders that ditch. Don't nobody. We ain't happy about that. Well, I don't know. Today's times, you see my son, he be at school blowing big gas. That nigga a gangster. He just like me. This is something a man would say. Hate to be gendery, gendery. This is something an uh, uh, idiotic dad will say. You see my young nigga, seventh grade, he got all the girls. They be at school smoking weed. This little nigga get in trouble every day. He remind me of me, cuz. It says right here in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 21. It is painful. Listen to that line. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of a rebel. Your kid tormenting and terrorizing, ain't listening to nothing. Everybody else's kid's doing the right thing. And they, whose son is this? You ducking, pointing at the, somebody else. Boy, you look just like you. Get over here. This your daddy? That's painful. Like, I didn't raise you like this. You look at you. My mama used to tell me this all the time. Watch this. Watch this. My mom used to say, if you go up to that school and you embarrass me, I'm going to whoop you in front of everybody in that classroom. Because <laughs> don't nobody want to be that parent that got the kid that's terrorizing and tormenting. That was me. I was that kid. I done got caught having sex on campus. I done got caught ditching with all the girls. We going to an abandoned house to smoke weed. I done, I was that, I was that kid. My mom used to beat my butt every day. I dropped, look, my mom, my mom had a job for nothing. She would get up, drop me off at school. Soon as she drive off, I walk straight through the school, jump the back gate. And we all go to our little ditch spot and wait for everybody to meet up, smoke all our weed, go to the bando apartment, get the girls, go hang out all day, go back home, go put backpack stuff back on, spray cologne, walk up in the house. Ooh, school was so good today. What you learn, huh? What you learn? A bunch of stuff. Get your butt in that room and shut up and sit down somewhere. And then when that report card came, how you miss 70 days of school? I've been getting up. For 70 days taking your tail to school. <laughs> uh, the machine messed up. I was not at school. I was that kid embarrassing my family. I was this, this, I was this, bro, I was this verse. It is painful for a parent. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. I was very foolish. Thanks be to God, he turned my life around. I got testimony on testimonies now. I was bad though. I ain't gonna lie. My name Dante. You know they say most people named Dante was bad. That was me. I was the Dante. 
And that, that everybody ran across that school. <laughs> Anyways. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. Cece, you hear that? A broken spirit saps a person's strength. That's why I told you, be careful. Be careful. Pray for the amount God tells you to because broken people are coming. When they see you praying and see you doing stuff and it's the power of God is moving, broken spirit people will sap your strength because everybody's coming. They're not saying pray for me. They're not saying I want to pray with you. They're saying, can you pray for me? Because they're coming from a place of brokenness. So that's why I said this. You can't take all the fades because a cheerful heart is good medicine. You want to be around cheerful hearted people because they, they give you what you need when you're weak. It's good medicine for you when you're drained. It's good medicine for you when you're tired. It's good medicine for you when you're frustrated. It's good medicine for you when you hung down. It's good medicine for you when you're broken. So stay around cheerful hearted people. Stay around cheerful heart, cheerful hearted people because it's good medicine for you. A broken person's spirit, a broken person and a broken spirit saps a person's strength. People that are broken, when they pile their problems on you, if you're not ready to deal with it, you'll find yourself doing this. Oh my gosh, how many times is this person going to ask me to pray for them? How you start getting frustrated with the people because they're sapping your strength. I don't know why people don't understand. They want you to pray to the God that they should be believing in themselves. Can you pray for me? You know, you can pray for you too. You believe in God, but you asking man to do it. Don't sap this person. God filled this person up for a purpose. They poured out into you. Now leave them alone. You behind the scenes. I need prayer again. Didn't I pray for you in front of 300 people and now you're going to inbox me? You need some more prayer? Uh-uh. You're not going to do this to me. You're not going to trouble my spirit. You're not going to have me cussing you out because I'm trying to avoid all of this. And you sitting there, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? I did. Do you believe what we're praying? But you're not about to sap my strength. You're not going to have me crawling like an army man on my elbows. Jesus, I need a refill. Can you send some people to speak into my life? I need a spark fly lit up under me because everybody is draining me. It says it right here. Proverbs 17 and 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine. So you know how to get your medicine. Get around happy people that got cheerful hearts, uplifting, very positive because a broken spirit saps a person's energy. I'm praying for you. I would encourage you to pray for yourself as well. I would encourage you to read the Bible, read some scriptures, um, encouraging scriptures, scriptures that will lift you up and have you um, on a positive note, scriptures that take away the worry. Because when you do this, now you don't have to keep tracking people down for prayer and you can pray yourself. Come on, come on. <laughs> but yeah, let me um let me go, let me go, let me go. 23 says the wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. Mm, this is a good one. I want to leave this alone, but this is a good one. The wicked take secret bribes. To pervert the course of the justice. Hey, come here. I need you to go on Elder Craft panel and just sabotage everything. Here, I'll give you two dragons. I'll make sure. Look, I'm going to make sure you hit your quota. Just every time you go in his live, just do a bunch of stuff to distract the praise and worship. Speak to everybody in the comments. Talk all the time. Type, 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 type. Say what people are trying. Says it right here. The wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. 
Now let's go in the real world. How many people you know that took money and tried to go trap a celebrity or something because they was doing something positive? He raped me. I'm pregnant by you. I remember one time one of my coworkers when I was working, this girl sitting right next to me, she was fine as wine, sat right next to me. One of her best friends slept with a basketball player and she was telling her about it. She's like, girl, I met, I'm not gonna say his name, girl, and, with it. She's, and guess what this girl told her after she heard the story? Girl, if I was you, I would trap him. Girl, you better have a baby by him. Now he gonna, then you can have him for the rest of his life. I mean, for the rest of the, and I'm sitting next to her like, People really do this? I thought this was some reality TV fake Instagram stuff. This is real? Like, my mind was blown when I heard her say that. Like, did she say, girl, you better trap him? So, poke a hole in the condom and then get pregnant by him and then tell him it's his baby. And then now you got a basketball player, girl. This is how we come up? This a hustle? I thought selling weed and getting enough bags off and stacking the money, I thought that was hustling. So you mean to tell me you having sex, popping holes and condoms, hoping a celebrity gets you pregnant so you can have your secure, your bag? What do you think about yourself? <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's not funny, but have it ever crossed your mind that you don't have no morals? Have it ever crossed your... So you mean to tell... <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. That's why I said I wanted to leave it alone. The wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. So this person worked. Look, and it goes both ways. I got a homeboy that do this. He did, he's, This is one of his favorite lines. I'm like, this is so, he is stupid. But man, I bumped this light-skinned bad little chick. Man, I'm thinking about getting her pregnant. What? Because she fine, you're going to get her pregnant. You know she's not going to be fine. 10 years from now, and she probably really ain't fine. She probably got makeup on. It's deception, sir. Have you seen her without the hair hat and the makeup? Go off of that. Do you like the person that don't got the nails on, that don't got the wig on, that don't got the makeup on? Do you like that person? She bad. They all bad. I'm sorry. No disrespect, ladies. But all of y'all are bad because it is a costume. And this is no shade. This scares the crap out of me. This is what I'm about to say right here. This scares the crap out of me. This It's this video that they do on TikTok where they show you how they look regular. And then they go, boom, and you see the witch. Every time I see one of them, I'll be like, oh my God. I'm not even scared of the first person that they showed. I'm not scared of the natural person. It's when they turn, because it's so far away from what you seen at first. Like, it's, you'll be like, oh, snap. Well, I'll be like, I'm not going to lie, because some of them, these brothers, because it's all what your eyes are trained to see is beautiful. I like a natural woman. After I see how she looked, she could put whatever she want to put on her. That's awesome. Oh, that's dope. That's tight how you did that. But as long as I know how you look first. But it's this thing going around on social media where these girls is popping up like. Do we see it? Do we see it? Do we see it, girl? Can you see it? I beat my face up for 30 days for this. He better say something. My cash app better start ringing. Watch this. Watch this. Do it the other way around and see the results. Ooh, let's start a new challenge. Show them this first. And then go. Bet you ain't gonna, you gonna, your following gonna drop. Your cash app gonna owe people money. Do it the other way around. Watch the results. Everybody, go, ah, everybody gonna be scared. It's crazy. My bad, I'm just, my bad, y'all. <laughs> but it's crazy. I see it all the time. I forgot how the song goes. Boom, 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 boom,
whatever. I don't know how the stuff go, but I see every every time I see a girl and it ain't no makeup on, I instantly straw. I said, "You're not gonna scare me with this witchcraft. It's scary. Get that out of here. I'm out of there. I'm gone. You're not gonna do this. I'm, you look. Yes, you look good. Thank you. But what you're doing is taking the value of what natural beauty is because the version of the girl before the first, the new version lets you know that." Every girl is beautiful now. Beauty is not natural anymore. It's a coloring book. You're sitting there. She make it her name. Whatever the heck that song is saying. <laughs> but it's like. We, you want to be seen as beautiful, but it's a, it's a, it remind me of the wave cap hat on backwards days. Remember when G-Unit came out, everybody was wearing a hat like this with a wave cap under it. Every nigga walking around like this, talking about I'm different. That's what it reminds me of. Like it took away pure beauty now. So deceptive. So now it makes real men and real women Look for what's in you. Okay, I see the, 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 the version of that and the cute version. Open your mouth and talk. What, what, what's coming out your mouth? Uh, first of all, that, oh, I'm out of here. Ooh, don't want nothing. I'm cool. It's fine. You ain't got to say nothing. Save your conversation. Ooh. We letting the devil destroy us outside and inside, and we don't even see it as that. You just mad because I'm, no, I'm not just mad. I just, I just know it ain't going to be no length in this relationship because I'm, it's all deception. If I took my hat off and took a hair piece off and was George Jefferson down the middle of my head, unzipped a body that had muscles on it, and I was a stick figure under that, you will be like, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got a cool conversation and all, but I can't. I'm sorry. No disrespect, but I can't wake up looking at no moving on up. I can't wake up. Every time I see you, it's moving on up in my head. I can't do it. We got to keep it real with ourselves and others. Because beauty is way deeper than actual look. People have beautiful conversation that looks with a real person, with a real man and a real woman. She don't care about your looks as long as you just ain't. I mean, come on. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. But the conversation and what the, how a person, the, the conversation that you hold with that person is what really makes you like them. The way they care about themselves is what really makes you like them. The way they treat others is what really makes you like them. And these are only for real people, y'all. Y'all, the ones out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, Miss Reed. But then you got those that don't care, man. Listen, it's some brothers out here that don't care how smart these sisters are. It's some brothers out here that don't care how intelligent as long as you i need the fake titties on you i need that fake butt and i need a ratchet attitude and you better know how to twerk and then after about three months you like throw her in the trash because they walk in porns and men are they got they have addictions to porn so they want this walking porno that they could just do whatever they want with until they get burnt out 